All right, first up with our Z690 coverage is our MSI Z690 Unify. This is from the Meg series, but this is a pretty high-end DDR5 supporting motherboard for your 12th gen Intel CPU. So 12900K, 12700K, the i5, the 12600K, other CPUs that aren't out yet for LGA 1700. This board has quite a few tricks up its sleeve, and the new Z690 chipset is all new with uh, a lot more PCIe bandwidth than it would first appear, and this motherboard makes pretty good use of it. Let's, let's dive in and take a look. All right, so first up, fit and finish. This is a higher end premium Z690 motherboard. And unlike prior generations like you know Z590 and Z490, uh, there's quite a bit of variation in how much power your CPU can use over time, especially for the K-series unlocked CPUs. Um, it is true that the K-series 10th and 11th gen CPUs could turbo and use up to 250 watts. But the 12th gen CPUs, the fully unlocked ones, can turbo at that 250 watt PL2 power stage pretty much indefinitely as long as you can maintain cooling. That means that you need ridiculous power delivery for those CPUs as well. And so this is a direct 19 plus 2 power phase design. This motherboard will have no problem delivering even beyond 250 watts to that, you know, Core i9 monster CPU. Like 330 watts is about as far as I felt comfortable pushing it and, uh, Oh boy, uh, managing the heat at that wattage becomes a little bit of an issue. For our test setup here, we got a Lee and Lee test bench machine. I'm using the MSI Core Liquid ML360. It's a pretty cool 360 millimeter AIO, the latest and greatest from MSI. It's a Asetek design, but there's actually a fan inside the pump so that you get a little bit of downdraft cooling around your VRM area on the motherboard from the AIO pump. And it's hidden and quiet, so you don't really see it, but it's there and it works. So that's what we use for our, our test setup. So it's sort of a quasi open air test bench. In doing that, you know, our VRMs would still get up to about 70 degrees C when I was pushing 300 watts plus through the CPU under normal, basically out of the box, you know, the Intel i9 12900K running at its 250 watt monster fastest desktop CPU <laughs> default configuration, which is not really technically much of an overclock. Um, the VRM area got warm, but it was barely warmer than like 55 degrees C for pretty much the whole test. I mean, it might have spiked a little bit, but uh, then it would it would you know sort of cool off just as quickly. So it's, it's owing to the workloads of the CPU and the other stuff. This motherboard has a built-in rear I/O shield, and there's a lot of interesting stuff going on with the rear I/O. So if we take a look at our port configuration here, we got a clear CMOS button and a BIOS flashback button. So suppose Intel were going to release an i5 CPU that was about $150 or $160, $75 that uh, was, you know, no onboard graphics and not quite as many efficiency cores and it was really designed to just sort of take the market by storm by just being all performance cores at a really crazy price point. Well, that would be a good pairing with this motherboard if you also wanted DDR5 and some of the other cool platform features like 16 PCI Express 5 lanes that you can break out into two physical by eight by eight slots, which is pretty rare on Z690 motherboards when you look for it. Yeah, that would uh, that'd be pretty cool. You can use the BIOS flashback button to update this motherboard to support that as yet unreleased CPU, which is pretty awesome. Then we've got two USB 2 ports and a combo keyboard mouse port. So those two USB 2 ports are meant for human interface devices, PS2 for things like old Model M keyboards. Hey, they're still out there. People still use those. Those are, those are good keyboards. And then everything else is 10 gigabit USB. All the Type-A ports back here, all seven of them are 10 gigabit. And then our Type-C, that's a 20 gigabit. Our two LAN connections here, both of those are the i225V 2.5 gig NICs. So it's the latest silicon revision of that. You shouldn't have any problems with that i225. It's pretty well supported on a lot of different operating systems. Uh, there is a, a little bit of an issue right now with the driver, the IGB driver on Linux. We'll talk about that. You get error negative two when you try to load the module, but there's a workaround. And then for onboard Wi-Fi on this particular model, we've got our Intel Wi-Fi 6E solution. This is even beyond 802.11ax and it has a Bluetooth 5.2 solution. And then we've got our audio codec. This is a, you know, we've got the 7.1 output with the optical SPDIF. This is based around the relatively new, uh, kind of more or less, 
Realtek 4080 chipset. It's a lot of the same features that you know and love from the previous ALC chipsets, but Realtek has made some pretty good improvements here in terms of signal to noise ratio and also the interface that's used for the audio. So it's a new Realtek audio codec, but a lot of the old stuff that you're used to in terms of the Realtek utilities and like how that works, pretty much unchanged. Now let's take a look at the physical board layout because this is where it gets interesting. We've only got three physical slots. Two of those slots are wired directly into the CPU. You see, we get to step back for a second and understand what the Z690 and LGA1700 socket gives us. The CPU has the DMI 4.0 link, it has a direct NVMe link, and then it has 16 PCI Express 5 links for the GPU. And the motherboard manufacturer can divvy those up however they want to. So for this motherboard, those PCI Express 5 links, 16 to the primary slot, or by eight by eight to the first two physical X16 slots. So you can run two PCI Express 5 devices on this motherboard, and that is no problem. All right, so in the BIOS, this board gives you some pretty awesome features. You got two slots by eight by eight. Those are your bifurcation options in the BIOS, right? No, you've got by eight by four by four. But without two physical by four slots, how does that work? Well, I've got a PCIe card that will break out uh, by eight worth of lanes into two U.2 sockets. So remember the Intel P5800X? This is a U.2 NVMe. I reviewed it. It's pretty much the fastest storage device you can get right now for desktop compute. Very low latency, very high bandwidth. There is nothing like it. If you want the absolute fastest SSD that you can get and money doesn't matter, that's the P5800X. And you can run two of them in the by eight slot connected directly to the CPU and your GPU is still gonna run at PCI Express four or five by eight. This motherboard, as far as I know, is unique in that feature. It's pretty awesome stuff. There's some other really killer unique features in the BIOS. I mean, you get all the standard stuff like being able to control your fan profile directly from the BIOS. You don't have to worry about proprietary utilities, which is great if you're gonna run other operating systems like Linux. You've got a ton of other options for device configuration. I even found a sort of hidden menu option. If you go down to NVMe self-test, and then you back out of the self-test, this mysterious SRIOV option shows up. And that's important in case some crazy randos manage to get GPU unlock to work with Ampere, at least desktop Ampere, like the 3090, so that you can run SRIOV, even though NVIDIA has not blessed us to unlock that. Surely there's nobody that's been snooping around trying to hack into my thermostat Wi-Fi to see if I'm up to anything with that from random giant companies. But I digress. There's also other options like direct key so you can reprogram the reset button to take you directly into BIOS because with things like fast boot, when you turn the computer on, it's in Windows. It doesn't wait for you to hit delete. That's, that's a pretty cool feature. There's also U key. U key as in the man with the key is the one that can unlock the computer. This will take a flash drive and it'll write some files to the flash drive and the computer will not boot unless that flash drive is present in the system. You can use it like a key. That's pretty awesome. There's not really a lot of security here. You can reset the BIOS and everything will go back to normal. But you know, if you want to keep your parents out of your computer and your parents are not really like super computer literate, I could see that being appealing if you're like a teenager. I could also see it being appealing if you're a college student and you don't want your roommate messing with your computer. There's a lot of scenarios where that makes sense. Doesn't really protect you against things like the evil maid attack or you know a sophisticated adversary but it's probably just confusing enough that uh yeah you could do that although it says you should uh you know the man with the key it's the person with the key a little, little bit of english there that's fine good job msi just trying some different stuff and seeing what features are there the primary m.2 that's the one closest to the cpu socket that's four lanes of pci express 4.0 that works really well and then this motherboard has four more pci express nvme slots Good Lord. All of them are PCI Express 4.0, except for one, which is PCI Express 3.0. That all goes through the chipset. Now, I know what you're thinking. It's a level one video. You're gonna talk about the chipset bottleneck. No, big improvement. Z690, the chipset is amazing. It has eight lanes of PCI Express 4.0. Well, it's PCI Express 4.0 worth of bandwidth. It's actually DMI4, but it's as much bandwidth as you get from four PCI Express four lanes in two channels. So it's a total of eight PCI Express channels from the chipset to the CPU. That's 16 gigabytes per second for all of your devices. So even if you're gonna run a bunch of M.2 on this motherboard, 
you're not really going to bottleneck because you've got that, that monstrous link between the chipset and the CPU. You want to run, you know, a Mellanox Connect X4 and a capture card or a Connect X5 and, you know, a couple of Samsung 980 Pro SSDs in RAID, uh, NVMe SSDs in RAID, not a problem. There's no bottleneck there because you've got so much PCI Express connectivity. The bottom slot on this is PCI Express 3.0 by 4. And so uh, that gives you a PCI Express by 4 add-in slot. You would use some of your PCI Express 5 lanes, I suppose, but you know, even with our Supreme 3090, PCI Express 4.0 by 8 lanes that this GPU would use, not really gonna bottleneck, not really gonna hurt you. Nothing, nothing bad is gonna happen. And that brings us to another exciting discovery with the Z690 chipset, which is NVMe RAID. When NVMe RAID was launched with Intel, it was a good solution, but it was also a little buggy and you also had to have something called a VROC module. So if you followed this channel for a long time or you've been an enthusiast for a while, uh, you may have uh, sort of bitterly discovered when you, it's like, I'm gonna get two you know, Samsung 980 Pro NVMe's because those are real fast and I'm gonna set it up in RAID 0. You know, I'm gonna throw caution to the wind, I back up my computer, it's fine, but fast insanity of two of the fastest PCI Express 4 SSDs you can get. Well, the Intel RAID thing wouldn't give you RAID 0 or RAID 1 unless you did a VROC unlock, at least initially. Some motherboards unlocked it, some didn't. Uh, I had a lot of problems. I actually bought a VROC module, which was $70 and it just wasn't a good experience and i think intel lost a bunch of rep points here trying to you know exploit this commercially to make a few bucks after the sale that that, that never works out it's just it, it is never good so the raid on these completely unlocked if you want to run raid 5 with nvme you can do it if you want to run raid 5 with nvme even if the nvme is in the nvme slot that is connected directly to the cpu you can do it because that was a weird thing where some other boards wouldn't support uh, the Intel volume management device stuff if it was in the NVMe slot connected directly to the CPU, but some other boards would. It was really weird, really super weird. They might've fixed that in a BIOS update or something, but everything works completely fine with Z690. I've actually got a separate video on setting up NVMe RAID on Z690 in a separate video. Look for that, check that out, get subscribed, comment below, come to the forums and I'll try to help you. But the Intel RAID software stuff is actually very good. And now not being encumbered by like VROC license key unlock stuff, you can actually use it and it works well. It works really well. Uh, Apple devices, you know, sort of famously, they're, they're running, you know, RAID 0 of NVMe devices because they needed more speed. Uh, the reality is it adds a little bit of latency, but you get a lot more throughput. So depending on what you're doing, that can be a good thing. So overall, the wrap up, this is a great board for something like the 12900K and especially the 12900KF. Uh, notice on the back, there's no video out. And you may be thinking, wait, you could put video out on USB-C. Yes, I'm telling you, I tried that. It doesn't work. This motherboard has no video out. But also, it does not actually disable the onboard iGPU. Some motherboards that didn't have video out, if you put a K-series CPU, which of course has an onboard GPU, the motherboard would disable the onboard GPU. Well, it doesn't matter that it doesn't have a GPU output if you have an added GPU, but you still may want the GPU to be enabled because you can run um, things like, uh, uh, you know, Transcode and the Adobe Suite and stuff like that will still accelerate. Even though that, that GPU doesn't have a physical monitor output on the motherboard, it doesn't matter, the compute resources are still there. So some motherboards would disable it if they didn't have a video output and some wouldn't. So I try to check that now. And at least on the, uh, you know, the day one launch press version of the BIOS, the onboard GPU shows up in Windows and I seem to be able to get the Adobe suite to render with it. But your mileage may vary, it's something to keep in mind. But yeah, the USB-C output here does not output video. There is no video output on board on this motherboard as far as I can tell. So just FYI, only, that's my only real uh, complaint or caution with this motherboard. It might've been nice to have more PCIe slots coming off of the chipset as opposed to M.2. Is anybody gonna really run five M.2 with this board? But if you were gonna run something like a RAID 10, which is a striped mirror, which this motherboard does actually support, um, you may get into a situation where you want to run all of those off of the chipset, especially if they're all PCI Express 3 devices. Um, so, you know, just sort of depending on what you're trying to accomplish, um, where one of the NVMe comes off of the CPU and all of the other ones come off the chipset. You can use that to avoid a bottleneck or 
you can use that to do some really interesting things with uh, Optane and caching and some other stuff. So your mileage may vary on that. I'm Wendell, this is level one. This has been a quick, hopefully, Z690 Unified motherboard review from MSI. It definitely has my seal of approval. This is a great motherboard for overclocking and pretty much anything else you'd wanna do with the LGA 1700 platform. That also gives you a ton of PCI Express peripheral bandwidth because of the way that it splits the slot. Look for that on other Z690 motherboards. Most of them do not provide those PCI Express 5 lanes in any slot other than the primary slot just for the GPU. All the other PCIe slots, they come from the chipset. So be aware of that, because depending on what you're doing, that might not be optimal for your goals. And what this is level one, I'm signing out. You can find me in the level one forums. Hey, if you got questions, come ask. That's what the forum's for.